As editor-in-chief of Package Design Magazine, I speak with some of the most brilliant thought leaders in the design, branding, and marketing of consumer packaged goods. Through the generous support of our sponsors, we bring these experiences to you. This video series explores what inspires these thought leaders and their insights on the collaborative design process as a strategic business competence. I'm Linda Casey, and this is Package Design Matters. The inaugural Package Design Matters Conference is less than a month away. Join us for this groundbreaking event in Naples, Florida, January 12th to 14th. The Package Design Matters Conference delivers mind-filling content and education with hands-on networking opportunities for consumer-facing brand owners or retailers looking to connect with leading design firms and industry suppliers. Hear from industry visionaries such as John Dedham of Conagra, Larry Light, the man behind McDonald's Loving It campaign, and John Walther of Kimberly Clark. Connect face-to-face -face with these thought leaders and more during three days of community, collaboration, and culture. And what about those networking opportunities? You asked and Package Design delivered. The Package Design Matters Conference offers a variety of small group networking opportunities that allow you to connect with like-minded design professionals. Hit a par three. Discover Everglades Alligator Sunning. Reel in a deep sea catch. This is how Package Design does networking. To learn more about our speaker lineup and these networking opportunities, view the agenda and register visit PackageDesignMatters.com. Today we're at the U.S. headquarters of Gilcrest & Soames, a female-led consumer packaged goods company that specializes in luxury personal care products for the hospitality industry. I'm meeting with the company's COO, Josh Kirschbaum, and VP of Marketing, Royce Lux, to discuss the company's creative culture, social responsibility commitment, and the branding and marketing strategies that are helping Gilchrist and Soames overcome market challenges and realize new opportunities. Our conversation starts with a discussion of the biggest challenge facing luxury personal care product companies. What's been really interesting in the recent years, in the beauty space especially, is there's been a big trend toward niche brands. And so you see a lot of innovation coming out of small brands. So it's not just kind of the big main players that are coming forward with the newest designs or the newest ingredients or the newest packaging, but it's, it's coming from every direction now, which really is great for the industry because we all have to raise our game um, so that we are relevant. We believe that a creative agency is only as good as the synergy it can derive from its team. An agency has a responsibility to inspire its employees and foster a culture that results in passionate team members who continually push the boundaries on creative thought and ingenuity for their clients. When we think about sort of branding, marketing, product development, um, really one of our challenges day to day would be, you know, how do we push the envelope? We are working in an industry, most of the time, hospitality, where we have a lot of different key player customer decision makers. So we have to design and create products that are really interesting and relevant to the GM of that hotel or of that hotel group or that executive decision-making committee, but it also has to be a product that fits really well with the aesthetics of the property and the experience they're trying to deliver guests, plus then really deliver against that experience 
for the guests. So that when somebody's actually utilizing our pro product in a hotel bathroom that they've paid $900 a night to stay in this mm -hmm. standard room, frankly, in a five-star hotel, that they are having a wonderful brand experience, sensory experience, and seeing great design throughout this um, from beginning to end. So we're serving so many customers with a single product that we bring to market. It's an interesting and very fun challenge on an everyday basis. Structural branding is a hallmark of what makes Product Ventures a renowned resource for packaging innovation. We have the creative talent to envision the possibilities with original and compelling ideas, and the manufacturing know-how to develop solutions for marketplace success. Excellent visual communication skills, artistic flair, and a keen eye for details are in our DNA. Our extensive team of industrial designers leverage new technologies to provide a value-added point of difference Utilize ergonomic expertise to ensure the best user experience and apply their ingenuity to surmount challenging manufacturing requirements. We do it all with a mission to create a desirable, meaningful, and memorable experience for our clients' brands. One thing that's really changed in the industry recently is that the drive towards socially responsible products has really gone up. And how has that affected your company? Yeah, I personally think we've really been on the forefront uh, in, in that area um, and really setting the trend in terms of socially responsible products. Uh, all of our products, uh, we don't do any animal testing, no animal byproducts, and it's really part of our core culture to make sure that that, that stays alive. It may not be something that we publicize as an uh, organization, but it's definitely part of our culture. Yeah, and I mean, furthermore, we have taken that to the next level. Not just are all of our product formulations clean, but we've also introduced a give back collection about five years ago, this Be Kind collection. Um, it was introduced in a paper bottle, so ultimate and eco-conscious, right? Um, and then beyond that, 5% of the proceeds from that particular collection go to support a bee sustainability research out of university in California. So we're making sure that not only if somebody is putting that collection in their hotel, are they getting a beautiful, really nicely designed product, but they're really doing good, feeling good all at the same time. At the start of a project where it's a blank piece of paper and the problem seems a pretty challenging one, how do we get inspired is, I think, a really useful question to get something from an idea or a concept all the way into manufacture. It is a team process. It's a very collaborative process. It's really about the collective and that is the powerful piece. One person with one idea plus one person with another idea is potentially three and beyond really good ideas. We're delighted uh, to have our name attached to such an incredible list of contributors. Definitely that halo effect from be kind and also what you're doing onto the onto the hotel or the spa has got to be great because then the hotel and the spa they feel like they're doing something great and they're a socially responsible company and brand as well. Well, that's absolutely right. So not only does it in consumer value that, but certainly the hospitality business values that and knowing their consumers really well and their guests, the travelers staying with them value products that are natural, value products that are good for the environment, value products that frankly do good, you know, allows that hotelier to demonstrate that they align with the values of their visitors. I think one piece um, too on that front that gets overlooked a lot is frankly our materials waste and how much of our sure. materials waste doesn't go sort of out the door into a landfill but instead is um, given as donations to nonprofit organizations. You can imagine that coming off the line, we certainly have bottles and tubes every day that can't go into our main distribution channel because, you know, there's a problem with the way the label sits on the bottle or, you know, the soaps aren't packaged quite exactly right. We don't want those to go to waste. We want those to go to people who really need product. And so we have a lot of give back that we do there that frankly gets overlooked every day because it's not sexy, it's not a paper bottle, it's not be sustainability, but it's frankly, you know, 
reducing waste and helping people. That's right. It's really a seamless part of our operation. As, as Royce mentioned, we have robust long-term relationships with uh, not-for-profits where we're doing donations on a regular basis, uh, and it really uh, builds within our sustainable culture here. And who are some of these non-for-profits? Yeah, so there's a, a laundry list, certainly. A lot of them are here in the greater Indianapolis area where our primary distribution and manufacturing facility is. So we support um, a battered women's and children's shelter on a very regular basis. We support um, a large organization that does ministry worldwide um, for human aid. So while they may come pick product up by the pallet here, they're taking that out to many places around the world. That's right. Goodwill, Red Cross as well. And definitely, I would, when you think about these organizations, you're thinking about people who may not be thinking about personal care and luxury and having that little indulgence. That's probably the last thing that on their mind would be able to bring something that's a little indulgent to a battered women's shelter. Oh my gosh, that's so wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. And um, you know, speaking of you know, bringing something to other women, just the fact that you are a VP of marketing and your CEO is a woman, how inspirational is that? It may be interesting to hear from a male perspective, and then mm -hmm. I guess I can share my my two cents on where I think there's value for our company. Yeah, no, you, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, Kathy DeVoe, our, our CEO, uh, really sets the culture uh, and really is establishing um, and cultivating a really creative atmosphere and makes sure that uh, the atmosphere is comfortable being in touch with our English roots, uh, as well as being able to be vocal about creative ideas that we can bring to the table at all times. So she's really rallied uh, uh, the team around her. Yeah, it's, it's definitely true. I would, I would second that and say that um, being a lover of brands, our CEO, and frankly myself too, love beauty products, love brands, love luxury. You know, I aspire sometimes to, to have some of these brands in my everyday life, these luxury beauty brands or fashion brands. So, so she and I both, as leaders in the company who just really have a personal kind of interest in it, allows us to challenge our team to, you know, hey, look at what's going on in the marketplace beyond our world and really bring in new ideas, new thoughts, and, and frankly, you know, new brands to the table sometimes because um, it's just something we're tuned into. And that's great because having a nurturing and creative environment is so important. At this location, um, you know, what what are the teams? What exactly are you doing? You said manufacturing. Sure. You said distribution. We talked a little bit about aesthetics. What happens in between these walls? Yeah. So actually, almost all of our operations happen here. Um, in the Midwest and the USA. So we actually have our primary design team based right here. And it's interesting, rather than outsourcing to agencies on every project that comes through the door, we found that there's a lot of opportunity for us to be specialized because our marketplace is a little bit different. Because there are unique design challenges when you're creating products for hospitality that also have to really resonate with a you know, luxury traveler. So I guess an example, I could pull a product and show you, an example of one of those would be, our designers understand the operational challenges of the housekeeping staff in hotels. They understand that when the housekeeping staff is putting different products out on the counter, it has to be very easy for them to differentiate between the shampoo, conditioner, body lotion, shower gel, all of those different liquid products. So they're designing to make that easy for them and to create an aesthetically pleasing collection overall. They also understand that you know the hotel doesn't want to replace the item if you haven't opened it and used it. But how is the housekeeping supposed to tell unless they design it in a way that there is some visibility into the fill level on that product? So there are a lot of little things that we wouldn't think about every day if we were just designing for the consumer audience, but that are factored into our design because of this interesting world we live in, um, this hospitality amenities world, um, that allow our designers to have become very specialized over time. And it's just hard to accomplish on the outside. But then you have this, um you really have this omni-channel kind mm -hmm. of selling environment because you do online, you do hospitality, and then you also do spa. And those are really different environments. How do you create brands that work in all of them? We have spent more time, effort, investment creating brands that work first in hospitality and then deciding from there how can we tweak or adapt that brand to make it work in another channel. And it's really been because 
over time as we think as a company strategically. How do we want to invest? Where do we want to grow? We want to make sure that we're always staying core to our true business and to our core expertise, which really is that hospitality channel. And so it's from there that we say, how do we grow this to make it relevant for consumers? I'd say we can do better, certainly. Um, and I'd say that we have challenged the team now to do better and we can expect some, I think, adaptation even further as we move into 2015 on that front. And actually going back to your Be Kind, I see it, the Be Kind packaging with the Zila packs. That's right. Those are great because it, for the hospitality environment, as a frequent traveler, I look at that, you get 100% product evacuation, and you get something that folds flat. So if I love the product, it's so easy for me to throw it into my suitcase and buy it later at home. Yeah, so you know, Zeal is one of our uh, strategic partners in, in, in design, and uh, we really leverage a lot of these unique vendor base uh, globally and um, be able to provide a, uh, a unique package design for our consumer. And like Royce mentioned, if you enjoy that experience at the, at the hotel, we want to also design a package that you can bring home as well and purchase through our e-commerce sites. Are your outside vendors required to bring innovation to you? Is that part of their contract? So most of our innovation happens in-house. However, we do consistently challenge them to align with our sort of standards, align with our values, and bring forward kind of new opportunities as they may arise. And the packaging is not only practical, it's absolutely gorgeous. So it was designed in-house by your in-house team, correct? And who owns design? Guildcrest and Soames. All of that sits in my group. I would not um, profess to be our most creative asset in the organization, nor am I a technically trained designer. Um, I'm one who certainly challenges the team to think about innovation, brings in new ideas, but then really I think when we get the best work out of our design team is when we provide them with some background and baseline information of the objectives we're going for with the new collection, potentially which hospitality accounts we expect to be users of that collection, and, and sort of some of the trends we would like to tap into, but then give them free reign to be creative, at least in a phase one, so that they're not trying to design to an answer. I think we get less creative, less interesting work when they're trying to design to the right answer versus trying to really design to something that will impress. Now, unfortunately, in the hospitality industry, um, I think that they're probably a little bit behind the curve when it comes to innovation in design. However, we still challenge ourselves to push that envelope um, because at some point, customers will catch up. And, and if we're not doing that every day, we miss out on a big win from time to time. And the operations, of course, uh, partners very closely with Royce's design team. And as you walk through our world-class operation here, uh, the production lines are very much designed around flexibility and making sure the production lines are not stifling that, that creativity, but on the contrary, be able to come to the table with ideas of flexibility. And, and, and the, the equipment that we actually have out there, um, one of our lines can run this and we can run this on the exact same line. So we're building that flexibility in. Could you walk me through the design process for your packaged goods? Sure, absolutely. We really have two kinds of um, package design programs or way a program gets started. One is we may be creating a, a new stock collection for Gilchrist and Soames that we're going to be selling to any hotel. Sometimes we're creating a specialty collection just for a certain property or property group. They start a little bit differently in that we are meeting the needs of the customer very specifically if we're doing the collection for a specific group. If we're doing a program that's going to be a new stock collection for Gilchrist and Soames, that starts with us going out doing some industry research, understanding really where there might be gaps in our portfolio, opportunities in the marketplace, and new trends. And we have a group that comes together and identifies what's kind of this core idea that we want to build the next collection around. And so then that idea is shared with our design team and we give them kind of very loose direction on some of these key elements that we'd love to see included in the new, in the new collection. From there, the design team really goes and begins boarding ideas and then they begin designing right out of the gate because we're a pretty high cadence organization, it may only be two weeks and we'll come back with first rounds of designs and then we bring in kind of an all hands on deck team, including some of Josh's team at this sure. stage in the game. Yeah, we have a really creative engineering team here and, and production team that, that really starts with the answer yes. And we want to make sure that we're supporting Royce's design team uh, in everything we do. And you know we've really made smart equipment decisions around making sure we've built flexibility into everything we do. 
That's absolutely wonderful and be able to get the yes for the creatives. In our industry, there are enough restrictions already just based on the way customers use products mm -hmm. that we are designing to and based on price points that we are designing to. We are a luxury brand that needs to demonstrate that luxury and deliver that luxury experience but at an affordable price point for the hotelier who's given it away. And so <laughs> they have enough constraints there that operationally it's wonderful that they can be creative um, in the areas where they can, they can really move the needle. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of expertise here. I'm seeing expertise in design, expertise in engineering, and that's kind of piquing my interest. Like, how sure. are you, how are you getting these wonderfully skilled people? Well, you know, you mentioned our, our our CEO Kathy DeVoe. She really has cultivated a lot of great talent here, and long tenured talent, uh, and a lot of the technical expertise that I'm speaking of have been with the organization uh, for a significant period of time, and they really embody the culture that Kathy's uh, cultivated here. Yeah, that's exactly right. We certainly aren't, um, you know, Midwest centric. We'll only hire people out of the Midwest, but we um, try to take those people that are talented that we have, as as Josh stated, and cultivate that talent. Give them experiences beyond their everyday, so that they are able to think bigger and you know continue to grow those design skills and then, frankly, the operational skills as well. Yeah. And how do you give them experiences beyond the everyday? Yeah, no, I, uh, to speak to, to Royce's credit, you know, she's done a lot of great things around um, organizational activities where, uh, you know, one of the things she's taught us is it's okay to be a luxury brand and it's okay every now and again to have a luxury experience. We may be here in the Midwest, but everybody deserves a luxury experience and, and Royce has brought a lot of great company team building activities which have really incorporated that experience with all of our personnel here. Yeah, I mean, some of it's really just fun things that are meaningful to our business that everybody doesn't experience every day. So, so an example of that would be um, recently we had one of our fragrance partners in to just do a nose training and fragrance training for the entire staff, not just the design team, not just the product development team, but, but for everybody in the organization. So we can all learn a little bit more about that piece of our business and how fragrance can have such a positive impact on somebody's overall experience when they are when they're using our products. And so that's a, just a little example of how we try to, you know, all of us think differently sometimes so that we can get those creative juices flowing. What are the top three characteristics you look for in an employee? That's a great question. So I, I think one of them is just that fire in the belly, yeah. right? You can't put a fire in someone's belly. So if we have somebody that we're interviewing for a position and we're deciding between two candidates, one's got a lot of raw potential, one has technical expertise, but really doesn't appear to have had a lot of growth trajectory in their career to date, we're gonna go for the raw potential every time, um, knowing that we have, to Josh's point, a lot of great technical expertise here in the organization who they'll work with and begin uh, learning from on day one. I think the other thing that's really important, I've stated a, a few minutes ago, I think, about us being a very lean organization. Um, we're also an organization that has a very high cadence. So, so we look for employees that are very motivated, that have high capacity, high cadence, are really willing to pitch in and help on the next project, even if the first project isn't yet complete. So I would say that we are a culture where you're not setting up a committee and meetings every other month to get to an end objective. You're saying, hey, who can I pull together at three o'clock today to get this moving? And so we really look for employees who are willing and want to step in at three o'clock today to get this moving. And that speaks a little bit about um, look, proceeding carefully versus proceeding with maybe a little acceptance of risk? No idea is a bad idea. Um, and that we, when we start developing any product, try to really start with the customer in mind and what risks are we willing to put in front of this customer. And so, so we really are willing to take some risks and to present some things that may be a little bit out there while we're also presenting some ideas that are very middle of the road so, so that we're never putting that blanket on innovation and on the, the new idea, but that we're also kind of keeping some things reined in. I think that overall, um, because we move quickly, if we make a mistake, we move quickly past it and we move right on to the next opportunity. Frankly, this collection right here, it's our Essential Elements Bathe Collection, it is one that was a risk and something that is outside our normal wheelhouse. You'll notice it's our Essential Elements brand not our Gilchrist and Soames brand because if we're going to introduce a new collection that is um, very, you know, modern design, 
and at a lower price point, which this one happens to be compared to others in our portfolio, we'll put that under a different label because the Gilchrist and Soames brand stands for premium luxury. However, we can meet the needs of our customers with another product as well. You can definitely tell mm -hmm. that they have a different aesthetic, sure. uh, especially when you compare it to the package that's right next to right next to the essential elements. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? It's got a beautiful ribbon on there. Oh, so you know, this is just one of our retail gift boxes. I'm sure if we opened it up today, there'd be a fun surprise in there because <laughs> I can feel there's a little heft to it. Um, but so when somebody buys a product from us online, certainly there's a lot of gifting that happens. You can imagine you've taken a really great vacation with your spouse or you've gone on a wonderful girls trip and you've experienced our products in that hotel bathroom and there's some nostalgia attached to that. Oftentimes that's where our online consumer comes from, our retail consumer comes from. And so you can imagine this is a great product to gift that traveler in your life or to gift those girlfriends that you went on the trip with you really want to help them remember that vacation and what better way to do that than every day when they you know take their shower to feel like they're back in that ritzy hotel definitely and it's so on trend for online package design because i would say 10 years ago we were looking at online package design and saying oh it just needs to be in a brown box it doesn't need to be designed it doesn't need to deliver all that matters is the product and consumers rebelled they said we don't want a brown box we want a gift for ourselves or for someone else to look like a gift and that looks like a gift yeah no and we know uh you know our brand represents luxury and and one of the things i don't take any risks in is building quality into the product everything we do is about avoiding risk when it comes to uh, giving a, a, a pure quality product to our consumers who expect uh, a premium purchase. And so here I see a lot of design vehicles being used. We have the ribbon on the beautiful gift box. We have these varnishes that just say modern for be kind. And, um, and then we also have some other textures there. But could you tell us a little bit more about you know some of these some of these textures and show us a little bit about these products. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the giftable items that people just love to buy for gifts or even for their own home are these soaps. And so because the soaps inside this package have many natural ingredients, these happen to be an oatmeal soap, we wanted to make sure that the packaging really aligns with that same feeling of a natural product. And so that's where this nicely textured burlap um, gift box comes in. And what a wonderful gift for somebody so that they can have a beautiful fragrance, a beautiful product in their bathroom all year long, but then it also comes packaged like a luxury product should. And be kind with all the varnishes. I mean, that definitely says modern. Yeah, and one of the things that, you know, housekeeping certainly loves, and when you look closely as nice, is that these varnishes are really fun. Each one is a little bit different. So the different titles actually have a different pattern in the varnish, which just is a really interesting design feature. They all have, of course, our, our B, but this one's got some plaid. This one has some interesting modern spots, and it's all just the black on black, which makes it look luxurious, even though there's that fun element with the neon green B. And it goes back to what you said earlier about designing for your particular customer in the hospitality industry and being able to allow the housekeeping staff to be able to differentiate the product easily. Well, that's exactly right. Whether that product is going into you know, a hotel in Italy, a hotel in, in Asia, a hotel in the US, everyone may not have the same language skills, but everybody can spot the plaid is this title, the spot is that title. So it's interesting, it's beautiful for the consumer and it's special, it's differentiated, but it's also really useful for the housekeeping staff. Definitely. And I need to ask, when was the first, uh, first opportunity, when was the first time that you used a Gilcrest and Soames product. Was it in a hotel? Yeah, sure. I, I'm a, a father of three, um, so it's few and far between that my wife and I get to take a vacation together, but we went away for our 10-year uh, anniversary, and uh, fortunately in our hotel room was a, uh, a, a spread of Gil Gilcrest and Soames product, and uh, it was really our, my first exposure to, um, uh, uh, to the, the product family, and it was, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah, the, the first products that I had exposure to were probably similar to a lot of people was, was this collection, um, which while it's branded Gilchrist and Soames, we, we affectionately call our English Spa Collection. And it's one of our classic collections that's been around the longest. Um, and so it was, again, 
it was actually in a specialty little boutique hotel where I experienced this collection. And um, it's fun for me now because so often I will have, you know, friends who are out on business travel or friends who are, you know, out on holiday and are sending me cell phone pictures of, hey, guess what I just saw in my bathroom? Right. Love your products. And it's, it's fun to help bring that little bit of joy, not just to my friends, but to anybody who experiences Gilchrist and Soames in their hotel. And the cell phone has completely changed the way marketing oh, does. Yeah. Sure. It's amazing. Yeah, I need to get all those friends to start posting that on Facebook and putting that on Pinterest, don't I? <laughs> right. Note to self. <laughs> How has the path that brought you to Gilchrist and Soames affected you know, the way that you do business and the way you influence and impact the company? Before coming to Gilchrist and Soames, I was the COO of a company named New World Beauty. New and World. New World Beauty is a supplier to the cosmetic space. Uh, they have their own private label brands and they have their own brands. One of their brands is the uh, Hard Candy Cosmetics line that you'll see in all of uh, every Walmart nationally and, and internationally. So uh, that was actually you know one of our main brands. Um, another brand within New World uh, are brands that get sold through the Sally Beauty Supply stores. Uh, and uh, so New World Cosmetics is a uh, supplier to the to the cosmetics beauty industry. And I've been able to take that retail experience and uh, help Royce's team in growing their e-commerce, uh, our, our e-commerce portfolio and really touching uh, uh, a retail customer. And the spa customer as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think the, the benefits of my background in, in the current company and role certainly are that I um, have a long history in brand building and brand equity and understanding the customer insights and how our brand can most effectively really deliver against the motivators and drivers of customers. And so we certainly have a lot of positive equity as a luxury hospitality brand already. So really what I'm able to do is kind of harness that, package it, and really help our team take that to the next level. And to put an exclamation point on that, your experience with Angie's List, I mean, that has got a lot of experience with consumer feedback, with end consumer feedback. And so you must have a lot of experience and skill and be able to take that end consumer feedback and bring that back into the innovation cycle. Absolutely right. The worst thing we could do around here is design for ourselves. The best thing we can do around here is design something that is going to be absolutely delightful for that traveler at a luxury hotel and so much so that when they go home they want that same experience at home and so getting that feedback whether it is through our hotelier customers whether it is through kind of combing content out there online or whether it's through frankly you know reviews we get on our products when they're sent out in birch boxes um, we're able to kind of take that data and use it to make sure that we're making smart decisions going forward can you tell me about a project that you're particularly proud of and especially maybe help the bottom line of the company? <laughs> sure. Yeah, uh, you know, I mentioned before in my last role I was the COO of a company in New World Beauty uh, and our largest customer is Walmart who supplied the hard candy line. Walmart's a very sustainable uh, uh, company and, and really makes sure that their vendors, in our case New World, uh, was driving sustainability uh, initiatives throughout their own organization. So one of the things that uh, I was most proud of in my last job is I actually turned the entire corporate headquarters into a solar powered facility. And we were 100% solar powered. Um, uh, and not only not only did we uh, uh, operate 100% off of solar power, but we were recycling everything you could possibly recycle: glass, plastic, corrugate, um, bottles, anything you could recycle. We were recycling, and that really, you know, helped cultivate the culture of uh, of the company. And fortunately, in my time here um, uh, at Gelkers and Soames, I've seen a lot of that uh, positive, sustainable um, approach already as well. Yeah. So, so I can't say that I have like the greatest do-gooder example ever like, like Josh has here. I think one thing that I might point to rather than, than doing a personal example is something that I've seen um, Gilchrist and Soames do well and one of the reasons why I was interested in joining the company. So Gilchrist and Soames um, has grown significantly in the last few years because they've leveraged their core expertise in the independent channel. And when we say independent, we're talking about um, hotels that are privately owned or in small groups, you know, five or 10 hotels, luxury upscale, but not big mass chains. So to us, independent even includes peninsula hotels, right? And so you could argue that's a, a group of chain hotels in many countries, 
but it's still a small group. Um, so Gilchrist and Soames has been able to leverage that strength and the global um, supply chain required to service those independent hotels to take on a couple of big multinational accounts. And I think what's been great about how they were able to do that is they were able to meet the needs of that customer um, with a brand. So whether it was one of our product brands or whether it was to go out and find a brand partner in the marketplace, design product that meets the needs of that brand partner, design products that meets the needs of that large hotel group, and then get the entire program off the ground for all of North America, and in some cases globally, um, really in a short matter of time, um, is exciting to me. That's an organization that's demonstrating continued forward progress, leveraging the strength of the existing brand, the strength of the existing sort of company, and, and carrying it forward to, to future growth. And so I think it's been really interesting to watch those as I've come on go from programs just coming out of the gate to now, you know, getting really rooted in those organizations to become very successful, not only for those hotels, but then also, of course, for, for our company and brand. Thank you.